Okay, we're building a food storage room. This is a roughed-in bathroom in my basement that I do not need. We were using it as a storage area for, of course, some canned goods and a few other odds and ends, which I have had to move into a bedroom in the basement. So, this is step one. We are going to build this. Just working on some of the stage one construction of the uh, food storage. I basically gone ahead and anchored multiple anchor points to the cement wall. Um, you can do that with a powder hammer. Basically takes a powder charge. These are also called finishing hammers or they have triggers or points where you can hit it on the end with a nail. Sometimes they have gun triggers. Powder charge, nail in the tip, load it, and then you put it right in the wall. Squeeze the trigger and they go in. So, we've done our frame two feet deep by about 36 and a half inches wide. Two feet deep, 36 and a half inches wide. I'm using king studs and I'm lining it with a one by four. As you can see, I'm going to save some room by putting my shells first, putting on the king stud. That way I don't have to cut out little rabbits. And this thing should be able to survive an earthquake. By the way, Lowe's will pre-cut the uh, OSB boards here for you. I guess that's what they're called. Um, I had them cut it for depth, but not for length. I did the length at home. And I am, of course, using some wood glue on all my joints to help give it extra strength. Okay, as you can see, I had some roughed-in plumbing here. So I just cut my back beam around it. And we have a temporary cleat here to hold the weight um, for when boards go on until I'm ready to put on the front supports. And we got some king studs to help hold the weight up. Uh, you're probably wondering what this board was. There was a wall here put in by previous owners. Um, uh, unfortunately, they glued that one to the floor, so now I'm having to work around it. I couldn't rip out the rest of this wall. It was a crappy wall anyway. All right, thanks. A little advice to the previous owner of my house. This is why you don't glue down 2x4s. You want to nail them down. It isn't, it's all right to want a little uh, vapor barrier under there. but So the pressure of this leg allowed the rest of this 2x4 just to pop up over the night, completely loosen the glue. Um, imagine if this wall had been completely built and behind sheetrock and the house had settled or something. Now you got a wall that's not secure. And with that piece cut off, we'll just use a little wood glue and try to bond that little piece of scrap there to help keep my shelf held up. Remember, the shelf is being held up pretty much with nails into the cement. This is more or less a backup in case these nails fail. Um, see these nails? You'll occasionally come across a defective charge in your powder gun. And, uh, yeah, I came into one, two, three, four defective charges while I was working on this wall. Basically, the charge will blow out the back instead of blowing out the front, and you lose all your, mo your forward momentum. So as you can see here, I'm working around some rough plumbing. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the plywood on top of my frame, but I'm going to have to cut out um, bits in the back to wrap around the drain pipes here. Since this was meant to be a roughed-in bathroom, roughly, that I just don't need, don't want. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a template. I've laid a 2x4 in front of the pipes, and I'm going to mark the spaces that I need to cut around. So when I cut my um, plywood, we can just slide it right on instead of having to make multiple trips. Um, I, I wanna 
All right, so we're making yourselves these shelves. Make sure you give yourself enough clearance um, for your mason jars. I gave myself plenty of clearance for these mason jars. Um, also, in case something else needs to go here, like boxes of rice or, you know, who knows. But they're primarily for mason jars, and we are going to maximize as much space as possible. And, of course, the back wall will be for larger items. As you can see, I'm continuing to use king studs to maintain support, even though we are, of course, nailed into the uh, walls. See those two nails down there? And those king studs, I'm putting one below and one above, so that weight is carried straight through the bottom, through each stud.